you recently diagnosed yourself with a psychological disorder or a neurological condition? Let's talk about this for a minute. Hi, my name's Catherine, and I'm in my car right now. I got this idea that I wanted to do one of those videos that YouTubers do where they, like, get food in a drive-thru and they're just, like, driving around eating their, like, fast food meal and talking to you. Well, like, I thought I was Trisha Paytas or something for a minute, but then I realized that's a damn way waste of money. I don't want to do that. So I made a vegan burger and some tater tots in my oven. I'm sitting in a parking lot in front of my house and I'm just going to sit here and eat this and talk to you. Is this entertaining? Do you want to see this? I don't know. I don't know what the internet wants from me. I don't know what the entire world really wants from me and I never have. I used to be so disparaging of people on social media talking about, like, neurodivergence or mental health or disorders that they thought they may or may not have. And to be clear, there are a lot of people, like, over on TikTok and stuff, like, kind of faking or pretending to have mental disorders. I mean, that is a real thing. There's a lot of really funny YouTube compilations about this, actually. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about real people who are clearly struggling, having issues, and who have just done a lot of research and reading about things and have decided that they must be autistic or they must have borderline personality disorder or whatever the thing is. I used to so totally roll my eyes at those people and just be like, why don't you just go to a damn doctor and get a diagnosis and go to somebody who knows what they're talking about? Why don't you just do that? What's wrong with you? I, like, I didn't understand. Now I understand. I really, really want to get actually fully evaluated for autism and ADHD. Like, I really want to do that. I really want to know what's going on. I want to get an actual full report about it from somebody who went to something like medical school. I was trying to find something special to drink in my house, and we don't have, like, soda or anything, so I just brought almond milk outside. I spent a lot of time over the last couple of days really looking into, like, how I how to get one of these assessments. I've mentioned a couple times that my health insurance situation is not the best right now. I do have health insurance. I have it through my employer, but everything is really expensive. It's a really high deductible. I have almost $3,000 left on my deductible this year, so I would have to pay almost $3,000 before my insurance would cover anything, which is to say I don't have coverage for anything like this right now. I would have to pay for it out of pocket by myself. That is roadblock number one. And wow, is it expensive. I, and I knew it would be. I'm very familiar with healthcare and the costs. I don't get sticker shocked when I find out it costs $2,000 to go see a doctor. So it doesn't surprise me that like getting like a full autism assessment done through the hospital network in my area ends up costing between $1,500 and $3,000. That really didn't surprise me. But I started looking into other places because, you know, autism is kind of a hot topic right now. And where there is a disorder or a condition or just some new health thing that has been brought into the public's awareness in America, right behind that phenomenon, there, there is just a stampede of healthcare-related businesses running up behind them to make money on it. So there's all these places where you can go privately and be assessed for, like, autism, ADHD, whatever. And I found one that seemed somewhat suitable. And the price for the autism and ADHD at the same time assessment where they can potentially diagnose you was like 800 US dollars, which is a steal of a deal in this market. I don't have a ton of money. I don't have like $800 to be going and getting diagnosed with things just because I feel like it and because I'm interested to know, like, I don't really have $800 to, to spend on this, but I was interested and I sent them um, a message, you know, saying, oh yeah, email me about your services. Like, you know, the contact form that physicians have on their website. I filled out the contact form, like, I'll talk to them. And then I started looking up reviews of this business. 
like you do, and I was reading like Reddit pages about people getting diagnosed with autism and ADHD and stuff like that. And any time you find yourself on Reddit trying to get information about something, I mean, you're just asking to get depressed about the state of the world. For-profit healthcare has a lot of problems with it, uh, the same way for-profit education does. The main problem being people will just take your money for any old thing. After I sent the contact form, and I kind of sent it in on a whim, but I, I, I read things that people had said about it on Reddit, and then it led me to like do a little more research on them. It was originally founded by an actual physician. They have like a few physical locations in the U.S., but mostly they do these assessments online. And it was like, you can book an appointment now. And I was like, okay. And I wasn't really going to go ahead and book the appointment without talking to them. It takes me to like a Calendly link. You know, like Calendly is one of those third-party websites. You schedule a Zoom meeting with somebody like you're doing a job interview. It's just like a third-party website you can use to schedule stuff. Like anybody can use it. It wasn't like they were sending me to like the patient portal of their website, right? It was literally just a link on Calendly and you could book this two hour assessment online with I don't even know who. Reading a little more about the place, number one, they don't take insurance of any kind. Number two, they insist on you making the payment, the full payment at the time that you book the appointment. Every physician's office I have ever been to in the United States says that payment is due at the time of service. It's reasonable to expect me to pay a full payment when I arrive at my appointment. It may even be reasonable to expect me to pay a small deposit maybe to hold my place for something like this, but they wanted that full $800 just because I clicked on their Calendly link. And the Calendly link had a little widget attached to it where I could type in my credit card information. By the way, this is not a scam. I looked into this place. This is a legitimate business. This is how they do things. Basically, they have some sort of a life coach or a naturopath or something like that do this assessment, which is just, I guess, kind of a standard assessment. And then at the end, if they decide to diagnose you with something, which apparently they always do, they have on staff a psychologist who's actually licensed who can sign the papers and get you an official diagnosis letter. I wouldn't be paying for like a real evaluation or anything that was going to be like a step towards real treatment for anything or even like a conversation about what that might mean for me if I, I do have ADHD. Basically it would just be somebody validating my self-diagnosis. If I'm just gonna be sitting here reading information, reading studies, reading research on the internet. If I'm doing 90% of the work and I'm just going to show up for a couple hours and then have a psychologist sign a piece of paper, in the fine print they mention that they don't actually provide a detailed report about the assessment. The hell kind of assessment is it then? I'm going to pay $800 for a life coach to sit here and give me te standardized tests for like two hours and then a psychologist signs it. What? And it kind of got me thinking, like, why do I even want this diagnosis? This is a really expensive thing to do. If they suggested any kind of treatment, it's not like I can afford to pay for any of that. It's not like I'm even really that interested in doing it. All I'm looking for here is validation from the medical establishment. The biggest reason I want to get an assessment done and get diagnosed with a thing is because I want to be able to talk about neurodivergence on social media and talk about my own experience without looking like some kind of a hypochondriac wackadoo who's just self-diagnosing herself and making things up. That is literally my biggest motivation for wanting to get this diagnosis. So I can be a person on the internet talking about things 
not like I'm an expert, but just talking about my own experience with things. But now I understand why people do that. Like, what is the point of this diagnosis even? Why do I need to feel like I need a doctor to validate something that's been clearly and obviously true for my entire life? Like, I've had some counselors recently just be like, you know, you should get assessed for this kind of stuff. You should really get assessed for this. That's about as far as I've gotten with like having a professional tell me that I have something or I am something. I could go to any psychiatrist, psychologist, psychiatric nurse practitioner in this country and I can explain things about myself and I can take all the tests and I can answer all their questions. 100% guaranteed I will be diagnosed with ADHD. Not a doubt in my mind they would diagnose me as being ADHD. I don't think I necessarily am autistic. I don't know that anyone would actually diagnose me on the autism spectrum, but I clearly have some traits of autism and I would like to further explore that. I would like more information just for my own personal knowledge. But then there's also the weird thing of as more and more research into neurodivergence is done, it seems that ADHD and autism are actually very closely related. And some people actually kind of think they may be kind of two sides of the same coin. So I don't really know what to think about that. But here's the problem with Western medicine. And when I say there's a problem with Western medicine. I want to be very clear. I believe in science. I believe in physicians. I believe in people going to medical school. I am not sitting here trying to lay some trip on you like all the doctors are crazy and they don't know what they're talking about. It's nothing against physicians. I am not suggesting that we should all give up on doctors and just start Googling things all the time. There's really two problems, especially if you live in America. Number one, the healthcare system in this country is severely broken and the cost of healthcare and the way you have to go about getting it is really, really prohibitive for a lot of people. That's problem number one. The other problem is just at a very high level is the fundamental assumption of pathology. We wait for a problem to happen and when there is a problem you go to the doctor and the doctor finds out where the broken thing is and he fixes it like he's an auto mechanic. I go to a doctor. I tell them I'm struggling in these areas. I seem to be different from other people in these ways. The only way this doctor can help me is by finding something that is wrong with me diagnosing me as being wrong, defective, broken, or other in some way, and then trying to fix the thing that's wrong. That's the problem I'm having with all this stuff. I don't think there's anything wrong with me. I don't think I'm broken. I think I, like a lot of people, am just wired up in a way that the world is not really built for. I am of the belief that it is not something I have so much as really just kind of something I am. I'm okay with it. I just want to know what I can do for myself and my family and for other people to help us all kind of understand each other better and live and be better in the world. Because the world is not built for people like me. A lot of things about me and a whole lot of people like me have been very misunderstood for a very long time. I am not lazy. I am not flaky. I don't have like a bad attitude about work. I'm not just crazy. I'm not making it up. I'm not somebody who just is a slob and can't get themselves together. I'm not unable to pay attention to things. I just pay attention differently. I wanted to have some dessert to go with us, but we don't really have any desserts in the house right now. I found this extremely old keto-friendly cereal. It's supposed to be like cinnamon toast crunch, but keto. This is an experience I've had many times in my life, and it is always embarrassing at first, but then very humbling and very profound. Being very disparaging, and condescending towards other people for doing something I think is stupid, and then suddenly having an experience where I understand exactly why they're doing it. I don't 
don't mean to be all, all doom and gloom about this, by the way. These kind of realizations I've had about myself and just research I've done and just talking to people I know and, and just listening to people talk about their experiences with things like ADHD have been incredibly eye-opening and useful to me. The Keto Cinnamon Toast Crunch cereal sucked. I wanted a popsicle, so I came back inside. I do want to tell you about one thing that happened today because it's effing hilarious. As I was setting up to make that video, I carried my food outside on a plate and I had the almond milk in my hand and I couldn't carry everything at once. So I had to bring all the food outside first and then come back in to get the camera and like my notes and stuff. And my neighbors saw me carrying the full plate of food and the glass of milk. And my neighbors saw me carrying the full plate of food and the glass of milk outside to the car, opening the car, putting the food in, and then shutting the car and going back inside the house. Like they were watching me as if they don't already think I'm strange enough. I wonder what they thought I was doing. So if you're a neurodivergent individual, uh, please leave me a comment and, and tell me all about your experience. I would love to hear about it. If you have found this video entertaining, useful or relatable in any way, please do like it. Please do subscribe to this channel because I do this all the time. And thank you for being you.